here not only with the victorious king of Costa Mesa himself, Tynan Dalbra, but just an army of AOJ Kids competitors. Tynan, you do this, you've done this uh, in a couple of your matches recently, where you bring the kids competitors around you. What does it mean to you to provide the example for these young competitors? Well, it's kind of, it's hard for me to put into words um, what this work means to me, right? I feel like I've dedicated my entire life and everything that I have is through jiu-jitsu. So I try to put all my energy back into the next generation because I know that there's a lot that they're going to harvest in the future. But I'm sure that I'm leading by example, showing them the hard work that goes behind the scenes. Make sure that I show them the respect between your opponent, respecting the game, and then being here and finally harvesting all that hard work that I put in. You're definitely providing an amazing example. This matchup was one that a lot of people were very excited to see. They said, you know, Tynan is going to be pushed, but you absolutely looked phenomenal. What was the game plan? What was the preparation like coming into this match? Just staying very uh, active throughout all year long, and you guys saw that I made, I made my Nogi debut a few months ago, staying active in both. And uh, if I tell you that I'm, that I'm the best, you'll say that I'm bragging. If I tell you that I'm not the best, you'll tell me that I'm lying. So I let the people judge, and I just keep my head down and continue to do my hard work. So where can we see you next? Gi, no gi. If there's a competition, I'm always down for it. But what you see me next is supporting the Federation. IBJF, that's where I built my name, is where I built my credibility. And uh, they're showing all the respect back. And uh, next for me, actually, is to be Sunday coaching all these kids at the LA Open for IBJF. And uh, yeah, here today, AOJ was able to collect a few golds, a few wins. On Sunday, I'm 100% sure that we're gonna collect multiple gold medals and multiple submissions and dominant wins. Well, you're gracious in victory. Congratulations, Tynan. Ladies and gentlemen, Tynan Dopra! Before we cut to a break, just wanna remind you guys that the IBJJF Absolute No Gi Grand Prix is brought to you by King's Kimonos. Go to kings.com, check out their gis, no gi gear and apparel. We'll be back with our GP final. The 2019 IBJJF Heavyweight No Gi Grand Prix. Robert the to Reverso Cyborg. Good for him. The oldest single wow. position. Qualified oh, 50 Hugo. And the $20,000 with a submission. And two oh, leading into oh. a pass. New Grand Prix champion. Nicholas and Victor. That's a submission. Oh my god. 
Hugo get that angle. Oh, gets the submission victory. It. Beautiful victory for Victor Hugo. And Nicholas Marigali is the IBJJF Grand Prix Absolute Champion. We are back at the 2024 IBJJF Absolute Nogi Grand Prix. It's been an absolutely yeah. insane night of action, and we got our last match of the night, the GP Auto Final. Jiu Jitsu, Kainan Duarte. Kainan Duarte of Atos Jiu Jitsu, two time world champion, world Nogi champion, European champion, absolute GP champion in the Gi, looking for his second. Absolute GP title, this time without the Gi. Jake, he's been dominant so far today. Absolutely, he's looked impressive in his ability to safely and efficiently move forward in the guard. New Wave Jiu-Jitsu, Giancarlo Bodoni. And his opponent, Giancarlo Bodoni of New Wave Jiu-Jitsu, came to New Wave in 2021. Since then, his game has risen to an absolutely another level. Looked incredible tonight. Be Patrick Gaudio, be Pedro Rocha. And this is a match I think a lot of people were really looking forward to heading into tonight, Jake. Yeah, Kynan and Giancarlo were the names being thrown around by a lot of fans and a lot of media pundits. Just seeing who was going to make it to the final, who, who was speculated to make it to the final. Kynan hit on a single leg to start this match off. Immediately. Wasting no time. Trying to put Giancarlo down. Going through a big effort. Good recovery by Giancarlo. Oh, kind of trying to get to the back now. Behind the hips of Giancarlo. Good start here for Conan Duarte. Dragging him down to the ground. Giancarlo staying patient. Understands that he can't afford to let that left knee touch. Giancarlo tries to roll through. So we've seen Gary Tonin do that motion to defend this back body lock. One minute in, kind of Duarte in a good position on Giancarlo Bodoni. Giancarlo blocking that left knee of Kynan. Now able to pull him down to the ground just for a second. Now Kynan gets him down, trying to lift the legs and right back on that back body lock. Great awareness by John Carlo getting back to this position, avoiding points. Kynan trying to trip that inside leg, break John Carlo down. Giancarlo now inverting. It's going to be two points for Kynan for the takedown. Pushing Giancarlo's legs toward the mat. Trying to keep his knee line free. At certain points in Kynan's career, he has been caught with some of these no gi specific leg attacks, but able to evade that situation. This is a position we've seen Kynan in all night, this knee cut position, trapping the leg. Trying to beat the knee shield. Passed the guard to Heisen Rita twice in his first match, the quarterfinal. He has a need to change up his game plan in response to either Heisen or Dante, his first two opponents in the day. So we saw knee cuts and him forcing the half guard position. Yeah, usually when he's able to get that deep underhook, he, he Goes back and forth. Right now, that right hand on the hip. He's looking to be able to potentially block the leg, the far leg, and look for an underhook to force half guard. We did see some great setups and attacks from bottom position from John Carlo earlier today. Has an amazing guard, as we talked about, very well rounded. Showed some great takedown skills. Great attacks from bottom. We know he's a great passer as well. Giancarlo looking for a small inversion underneath. Perhaps felt perhaps felt some danger impending.
Brennan trying to beat that knee shield once again. It's a strategy that we've seen him use a lot and that sometimes takes a bit of time for him to really wear down his opponent. I think what it allows him to do as well is also make some reads on what his opponent's tendencies are. When he's just kind of coming forward and providing little changes and little movements here and there to see how Giancarlo is going to react. But Giancarlo also is a very intelligent competitor on bottom. He's not going to extend himself too far. And right now, I mean, we're just nearing the halfway point of the match. Giancarlo has had a look on a leg entanglement. Now he's looking for the false reap. Kind of deals with it. Giancarlo holds a victory over a teammate of Kyan Duarte, Lucas Barbosa. Giancarlo trying to get under the leg, into the single leg X. Kyan steps out of it. Yeah, interesting, he forced the reap even further and slid his leg out. Position that we talked about earlier, Danny. And as soon as he gets in there, the crowd starts chanting, he's gonna pass. Strong position for Kine and great recovery by John Carlo. One thing that his team talks about quite a bit is the importance of positional escapes and retention and being able to recover to a better position. And he did an excellent job of that there. You can tell that's something he works on quite a bit in the training room. Giancarlo in on the leg. But every time, Kynan just makes sure to clear, get his knee line safe and evade that position before proceeding with another pass attempt. Four minutes left. Controlling that top shin. His left hand grip on the ankle kind of has also been implementing effectively all day today. Switching between the ankle grip and posting on the hip and fighting to get his elbow inside. That usually leads him to go to half guard. Floating now over John Carlos' grip and his guard. Coming up on the two minute mark. Oh, kind of now improves his position quite a bit. Oh, here we go. Body Gets lock. to the half guard again. Looked like he might have had a, a subtle look at possibly even mounting right there, but settles into half guard with only two minutes left. This is the final of the 2024 IBJJF Absolute No Gi Grand Prix. Kynan won the Absolute Grand Prix in the Gi back in 2022. Looking for his second Absolute GP title and looking to be the first Gi and No Gi Absolute GP champion. His team, Atos Jiu Jitsu, has done incredible work. Winning all their matches thus far. Yeah, if Kynan is victorious here, it'll be a perfect day for both Autos and AOJ. Back in half guard. This is going to net him another advantage. Assuming he does not pass.
Just one minute. In this, our final match of the day, Kynan Dwarch, Otto's Jiu-Jitsu versus Giancarlo Badoni of New Wave. The matchup everybody expected to happen. Kynan started the match really strong, took Giancarlo down. Since then, he's been using his knee cut passing, forcing the half guard position. Using his passing to score advantages, of which he has three right now. Giancarlo trying to make an elevation happen and make up this two points, but he's got advantages to make up as well. 20 seconds. Clock is winding down. John Carlo tries to shoot in, sits to his guard. And it's gonna be Kaiden Duarte who wins his second IBJJF Absolute Grand Prix title. He's an absolute Grand Prix Gi champion and an absolute Grand Prix no Gi champion. Unprecedented moves from Kynan Duarte. Atos, perfect on the day. And that man does it again. Kynan Duarte, absolutely dominant throughout the day here at this IBJJF absolute no Gi Grand Prix. Jeff, absolute no gi Grand Prix champion, gets the win in the final over the always tough Giancarlo Bodoni, who also put on a tremendous performance. Kynan is going to get his $40,000 check and GP trophy.